Wall Street opened a new week cautiously. While investors are anticipating economic data, the trading volume is low. Oil prices have come to the fore. A rally in the oil market makes investors doubt steady disinflation. Warnings of air companies about rising fuel prices pushed the benchmark stock indexes. And today, stock investors will find out more pieces to the global economic puzzle. Comments of a two Fed policymakers on further monetary policy are on investors' radars today. The major stock indexes closed yesterday in the red. The Dow Jones lost 195 points, or 0.56 percent, the worst intraday loss. The Nasdaq inched down by 0.08 percent. The S&P 500 shed 0.42 percent to close at 4,496 points. The stock indexes went lower to the red zone in the New York pre-market. Futures on the stock indexes slipped by 0.2 and 0.26 percent. The S&P is expected to trade in the intraday corridor between 4,440 and 4,520 points. The three stock indexes closed lower on Tuesday due to rising yields of U.S. Treasuries and growing oil prices. Treasury yields went up after economic data proved the resilience of the U.S. economy. The upbeat data made a shrieking difference with the poor PMEIs from Europe, the U.K. and China. Besides, the risk appetite was dampened by a rally in the oil market. Saudi Arabia and Russia decided to extend voluntary oil exports until the year end. As a result, the benchmark rates topped $90 a barrel for the first time this year. High oil prices cast a shadow of a steady disinflation. In turn, the Federal Reserve is unlikely to achieve its goal to bring inflation down to the target 2%. Market participants cherished hopes that the Fed would hit a pause button or eventually begin rate cuts. From now on, this scenario seems less realistic. Factory orders in the United States declined by 2.1 percent in July, having snapped a four-month sequence of growth. Still, the market gave a muted response to the such statistics. Among the 11 main sectors of the S&P, the energy sector displayed the most significant growth, rising by 0.5 percent after reaching roughly a seven-month high, following announcements from Saudi Arabia and Russia about a new extension to their voluntary supply cuts. The economically sensitive materials and industrial sectors were weak throughout the session, declining by 1.8 percent and 1.7 respectively. Utility stocks, which are sensitive to interest rates, lost 1.5 percent, making them the third weakest sector of the S&P for the day. The Dow and the S&P transportation indexes also ended the session sharply lower by 2.2 percent and 2.4 respectively. Rising oil prices led to drop in the airline stocks impact in the indexes. In individual stocks, Airbnb jumped by 7 percent, Blackstone shares added 3.6 percent on the news that their shares would be included in the S&P 500 index. Wall Street is also expected to open lower on Wednesday as concerns about stubborn inflation make investors nervous ahead of the key data, including the budget book of the Federal Reserve, which might help determine the interest rate trajectory. Today, investors will be focused again on the macroeconomics. After the opening bell, the market will evaluate the final S&P Global Composite Purchase and Managers Index for the United States and the ISM non-manufacturing PMI, which will shed light on the current economic conditions. Currently, futures market opinion regarding the Federal Reserve's September 20th meeting remains unchanged. 
According to the FedWatch tool, traders are proposing interest rates um, hikes uh, at the, the Fed's meeting in September remained at 93% with the odds for a pause in November at 56.8%. Investors are also anticipating the Federal Reserve's budget book, which will provide an overview of the US economy ahead of the much anticipated inflation data scheduled for the following week and the Fed's policy decision on September 20th. With the search in all quotes, there is growing concern that the scenario of occurring inflation and steady growth might shift towards uh, stagflation a situation of persistent price rises and falling demand. In the corporate sector, Apple shares fell by 0.7% in the pre-market as China instructed officials from a government agencies not to use iPhones and other foreign brand devices for work and not to bring them into the offices. Shares of American Airlines and Delta Airlines each dropped roughly by 1%. Shares of other airlines fell between 0.3% and 3.8% after three airlines weren't of a rise in fuel prices in the third quarter due to a spike in oil prices. The currency market is also looking forward to a series of economic data from the United States. In the meantime, some major currency pairs grasped the chance uh, to rebound. The US dollar index was trading at 104.70. The intraday Canada is defined between 104.20 and 105.10. The US dollar index is clinging to a six months high because fears about a slowdown in China and the global economy cause a risk aversion. On Tuesday, the index reached 104.90, the strongest level in a six months. In any case, despite intraday movements, the outlook for the US dollar looks much better than its basket of peers. It means that the dollar will secure its dominance, at least as long as the US economy remains stable. The Canadian dollar is trading flat intraday, gathering either bullish or bearish momentum. The policy meeting of the Bank of Canada will give fresh impetus to the loony. The USD card pays trading at 1.3633 at the time of recording this video, 0.05% down. The instrument is likely to trade in the intraday Canada between 1.3570 and 1.3700. The Bank of Canada will announce its decision on the key interest rate today after the opening bell, and markets are almost confident that the regulator will keep the key interest rate unchanged. The reason is uh, the unexpected contraction of the Canadian economy in the second quarter by 0.2% on an annual basis. The second quarter figures turned out to be much lower than the Bank of Canada's GDP annual growth forecast of 1.5%. The data suggests a potential proximity to a recession. Meanwhile, analysts believe that the regulator will leave the door open for rate hikes in future meetings. Therefore, the accompanying statement from the Bank of Canada later today will be of a great importance. The crypto market has been stuck flat. Crypto assets do make sharp fluctuations and take no notice of the industry news. Popular coins are trading quietly without a common dynamic. Ethereum, Solana, Binance, Cardano and Litecoin are wavering between drops of 2.9% and gains of 1.7%. Assets uh, are in the wait and see mood uh, as um, the standoff with the Securities and Exchange Commission is going on. On Tuesday, Grayscale urged the Commission to quickly approve its proposed exchange traded fund. A court order received last week requires the Commission to review Grayscale's application, although the agency still has time to appeal the court's decision. We hope you will agree that the best use of resources right now would be to issue a product approval over order, Grayscale wrote in a letter to the regulator. The Commission has not yet responded and the assets remain unchanged. 
As a result, Bitcoin continues to cling to the level of 25,700. If it does not hold, it could fall to $25,425,000. An alternative scenario could be recovery above 26000 Keep close tabs on financial markets on InstaForex TV channel. We are interested in your profits. Leave your comments below and ask any questions. And see you!